I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Jesus is Almighty God. The Bible uses this title of both the Father and Son. We should give profound attention to this claim of Jesus because it is the reality of who he is. This is why Jesus could claim, I and the Father are one. The Father and Son are equal in might. They are co-equals. Therefore, Jesus should have sovereignty over our lives. False religions add to God's word by writing another book, and God said your name will be removed from the book of life, if you do this. Muslims have to stop asking if Jesus died, and to start asking why. It is who Jesus was, and what he claimed that divides Islam fundamentally, from Christianity. Yeah, good morning and thank morning. you. Um, I've been um, kind of a bystander witness to a long-standing um, chatter on Facebook over the question of whether or not Christians and Muslims worship the same God. And I've yet to hear a good biblical answer to that question. So right. thanks for your response. This has become hugely controversial. Last year, Wheaton College, my alma mater, dismissed one of its faculty members because she said that Muslims and Christians uh, worship the same God. And she was not able to defend her position, apparently, or explain it adequately, theologically, for the college to feel that they could keep her on the staff. Well, this brought down on the college enormous bad press and heaps of abuse. Even many um, Christian theologians say that the college was wrong, that Muslims and Christians do worship the same God, um, and that it, it, it was incorrect what the college did. Now, I have addressed this issue in one of my questions of the week on the website, probably about a month or two ago. So if you go to the, the website, look at the questions of the week for about a month or two ago, there's one on do Muslims and Christians worship the same God. And Without wanting to get too complicated, let me say that the way that question is phrased raises all sorts of difficult philosophical questions about what it means to refer to the same thing. Because we can refer to something under a false description. For example, I could say, uh, that man in the corner drinking the martini is um, my uncle. But it turns out that he wasn't drinking a martini, it was water. And yet, I, I am referring to the same person under a false description. And so the claim is, well, maybe Muslims are worshiping the same God, but under a false description of who God is. And that raises in all sorts of philosophical problems of what it means to refer to the same thing and how do you successfully refer. I think the question is better reworded by saying, is the concept of God in Islam the same as the concept of God in Christianity? Do we have the same understanding of God? And there I argued that they are worlds apart, that the concept of God in Islam and Christianity is very, very different. And one of the principal ways in which they are different is that the Muslim concept of God, I believe, is morally defective. It is a morally defective vision of who God is. As the greatest conceivable being, a morally perfect being, God must be all-loving. And this is exactly what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that God loves sinners, his love is impartial, it is universal, it is unconditional. And this is a world of difference from the God of the Quran. According to the Quran, God does not love sinners. He does not love unbelievers. He is an enemy to unbelievers. God in the Quran only loves those who first love him so that his love rises no higher than the sort of love that Jesus said tax collectors and sinners exhibit. They love those 
who love them. And that's the kind of love that the God of the Quran exhibits. So the Quran assures us of God's love for the God-fearing and the good doers, but he has no love for sinners and unbelievers. The Quran says that God does not love the very people that John 3.16 says God loves so much that he sent his only son to die for them. While we were yet enemies, Christ died for us. So this is a, a huge difference between the God of the Quran and the God of the Bible. The, the heavenly father revealed by Jesus loves sinners, loves unbelievers, wants them to come to him. His love is universal, impartial, uh, and unconditional love. But the God of the Quran, his love is partial, it is selective, and um, it has to be earned. It is conditional. Only those who earn it will receive it. So this is a vastly different conception of God. So I would agree with those who say that the God of Muhammad is not the God of Jesus Christ. He's not the God of the Bible. These are, in fact, I would say that the God of the Quran is a defamation of the heavenly father revealed by Jesus.